time to break into it. It's still really hot, even though it's been sitting at least 40 minutes. You could see all that smoke. My potatoes are intact. The cheese has melted around it. I'm not gonna have a ton now. I just had a huge glass of milk. That was so good. Ice cold, delicious milk. But you see how that is nice. It's still nice and um, creamy and it's still cheesy, but not so thick. And then when you reheat it, it's going to be perfect. The potatoes will continue to absorb. Get off of here. Okay, it doesn't want to. Let's try it. Okay, let's try this one first. Tender as can be, but intact, just how you want it. Hard to pick up. <laughs> Doesn't want to be eaten. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Everything you need and then some. Not too salty. The perfect amount, that tiny little bit of um, nutmeg. Mm. My husband's going to love this. This is going to reheat really beautifully, too. I have a ton of it. Those were three really big potatoes. So there it is, scrumptious, delicious, tender, cheesy, creamy, smoky, bacony. Oh, you're just mad because I didn't eat you first. Okay, you're next. Mm. make this like I said I'm gonna be serving this with some smothered chicken and some kind of a simple vegetable if I'm don't hurry up and edit this I might show my husband's reaction and if not see you again until next time I decided to cook off a pack of delicious thick um, bacon and when I was looking at it, I thought, look at all that bond and look at all this delicious smoky bacon grease. And I thought, you know what? Let's make some cheesy bacony scallop potatoes. Okay, for our cheese sauce, I have uh, one cup of small diced onion, four ounces of Velveeta cheese, one and three quarters cup of mixed um, grated cheese, one third cup of flour, we may need more or less, a little bit of garlic um, powder or granulated garlic, um, onion powder, white pepper. I might add some black pepper at the end, but let's get it going. I removed um, all of the oil from the bacon and I'll show you that now. So here's all that delicious bacon. I'm not gonna use it all. Like I said, I'm just prepping it for the next few days I wanted to get it done and all the oil that came out was about three quarters of a cup I left about two teaspoons in the pan so we're gonna go look at that now and we're not gonna deal with the bacon yet but we are gonna deal with some of this bacon grease okay there's my pan all that delicious bacon fond like I said there's about two teaspoons in there I'm just gonna drizzle in maybe another half teaspoon. I'm going to turn the fire back on and we're going to start cooking our onions. Okay, the onions are in. Okay, let's just start getting these soft and translucent. This should take about two or three minutes. All right, well that was about three or four minutes. 
putting all the flour in now. I have my um, burner set to low because I don't want this to get too brown. See. These bits of fond at the bottom are delicious, but if you, once the bacon and everything is out, this can quickly turn bitter. So you don't just want to cook this on high. It's better to take it slow and guarantee that all of it is staying nice and pristine. It's going to feel a little dry. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the milk and possibly some water. Okay, time to add the milk. I'm going to add a little bit at a time at the beginning because I want to work out the flour. My milk is hot. Okay, now more. in your um, onion with all that flour before you add all the milk because sometimes it can just create like little dumplings which we love but we don't want them in our cheese sauce It takes a little bit longer, but it always guarantees that you're going to have a smooth, cheesy sauce, not little lumps of flour. All right, I'm going to work out all of the lumps. I'm going to add the rest of my milk. <clears throat> and then I'll bring you back to the process. Okay, I've brought you to my window. I've taken it off heat just to show you how it looks. I'm going to add a little bit of onion powder. Maybe about half of a teaspoon. pinch of garlic powder, literally just the tiniest amount, and then mix, yes we just added all that brown onion but it's nice to have the different levels of onion flavor and complexity. Now we're going to add half a tablespoon of chicken bouillon. It's an optional ingredient. Now all the cheese. Four ounces of Velveeta and one and three quarters cup of your choice shredded cheese. I'm using the Mexican style blend, but you can use all the cheeses your heart desires. Okay, 
I'm going to take it to, back to the heat now. <clears throat> Let all the cheeses melt, and then I'll bring it back to the window so you can see how it looks. Okay, before I show you the cheese slaws, I've cut my potatoes. I had three large russet potatoes or baking potatoes, and I've cut them into one inch slices with enough water to just barely cover. We're gonna reserve that water for um, our cheese sauce. So I'm just gonna add a literally like an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. I don't wanna over salt it because the bacon and everything has a lot of salt. We want to just have enough. Okay, here's our cheese sauce. I've added one teaspoon of room temperature butter. That's an optional ingredient, but it makes it nice. We're gonna be adding more cheese as we layer it. So this is gonna be just our basic um, bechamel. I'm gonna add just the smallest grate of nutmeg. Okay, I just grated about that much nutmeg. Literally just the end of the tiniest little piece of fresh nutmeg into my sauce. This is another optional ingredient, but one that I think really gives the potatoes some character. I've given our potatoes about a 10 minute head start because the cheese sauce is too thick to tenderize the scalloped um, cheesy potatoes uh, without it becoming really thick. And regardless of how long you cook it, it will not tenderize and you will have hard little hockey pucks, unfortunately. So this is just enough to cook them. They're still um, not totally fork tender. They still have some resistance. Sorry about that, but they're good. I've reserved some of the water to thin down our cheese sauce just a tiny little bit with the potato water. Let me show you that. Okay, I took about two cups out. I'm not gonna use it all, but I'd like to reserve my potato water for other uses like baking bread or making. Okay, I've buttered my casserole dish. I normally don't cook in a casserole dish like this, Pyrex style casserole dish, but just to show you how it looks, I'm gonna do it. Okay, just give a nice bottom coating. We're gonna need this to have a good amount at the bottom. You see how nice and thin that was to that cheese sauce I added one quarter cup of my potato water. Next, I'm gonna add the potatoes. Okay, my first layer of potatoes is in, and then I'm just gonna add a little additional cheese. Add as much as you want. I'm gonna keep layering it. The next layer is going to be just on top, that's my oven preheating, a little bit just on top of the potatoes. I mean, you don't have to be that careful with it. You could just go on ahead and add it. I just wanna make sure that I have plenty of cheese sauce for the whole casserole. So I'm gonna keep building it just like this. So it's the sauce, the potatoes, the cheese, the sauce, the potatoes, the cheese, the sauce, until we get to the top. Well, there I go giving false information again. What about that delicious bacon? So this is, like I said, very meaty type bacon, almost ham. You could substitute ham if you wanted to. So every about two layers or so, add um, the bacon. So after you add, the bacon, then we'll start with the cheese. Okay, so two layers of potatoes, cheese and sauce, and then one layer of bacon till we get to the top. All right, I got it all the way to the top. It's super thick and delicious. I topped it with the final layer of potato, the, all the cheese sauce that we made, and of course, some shredded cheese and some bacon. 
and a tiny little bit of parsley, another optional ingredient. I think it just pairs well with the cheese and the onions and the bacon. Okay, time to put it into the oven. So I put it in the oven at 400 degrees, uncovered for about 15 minutes, and then I put it lightly tented for another 15. I'm gonna put it back in the oven, but I wanted to show you how it should look. Delicious. So it needs to boil. I want to see lots of vigorous boiling going throughout. Another thing I didn't mention was that you need to use an oversized casserole bigger than the one you're going to actually use so that your um, when the cheese boils over, it doesn't uh, ruin your stove and become all smoky and, and a mess. All right, back in the oven at 350, lightly tented with foil for another 25 minutes. Okay, out of the oven. So let me show you the sides. You could see the vigorous boiling. It's been sitting out a minute, but you can see it boiling. Okay, look down. You love this sound, huh? Okay. Now we let it sit. For how many days? We're gonna let it sit until it homogenizes, probably about half an hour. 60 seconds? Half an hour. 60 seconds. Can you try the smother potato first? Okay. Mmm, that's good. It tastes smothered. It's it tender. Mm hmm. You know I like smothered. Now try it with the potato. No, it's too big of a bite. I put a ton of potatoes because I know you love your cheesy scallop bacon potato. Love them. My babe. You use the giant potatoes. Mmm, that was good. I was like you're taking a bite of a baked potato. Good meal. Winter, winter chicken dinner. Well, it is a chicken dinner. That's what I said. All right, go enjoy. Thank you.